All right, everybody, welcome, welcome here. This is Mr. Lan. Welcome to our U.S. History Flipped Classroom. So let's get into our video number 10 here. The title is at the top. Write that down on your note sheet. The French and Indian War. Pause it. Write the title. Here we go, kids. Using your note sheet, we're going to use the right side of your journal to paste this down. If you're writing at home in your journal, not using the note sheet, that is page 22, Vendu, 22, right side. That's what you'll be using. Here are the vocabulary words. Pause me right now and write these vocabulary words down. Great, you're back. The words I'll be using today are debt, at taxes, excuse me, taxes, ally, not ally, ally, proclamation, and a very interesting sciencey word, Appalachian Mountains. Listen to that. Appalachian Mountains. All right, cool. So you ready? Let's do this. So big question number one. How did this French and Indian War that we're about to learn, how did it lead the 13 colonies to start a revolution? A revolution against their king, a revolution against their home country of England, a war. So a war to get a war. How? Why? What was it about? Let's dive into it. So, French and Indian War, we're going to learn about before the American Revolution. Let's go. Now, who fought this French and Indian War? First of all, as the name suggests, it was not France versus the Native Americans. No, 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 no. It's called the French and Indian War. Were there French in there? Yes. Were there Native American Indians in there? Yes. They were fighting, but it wasn't between those two. Look at the left side of the picture. Not between those two. It was between, on the right side, a country that we know well named England. Now, I'm going to change the word here because England has become a new name because it's become unified in Europe. Where I'm going to start to use this word. Listen closely. Great Britain. Great Britain. Great Britain fought France in the French and Indian War. I know. Great Britain fought France in the French and Indian War. Write that down on your note sheet, okay? Cool. So, Why? Britain and, Fran Britain and France hated each other. Like forever, they hated each other. Now, in North America, in the colonies, it was a new world. So France and Great Britain were trying to own land there, right? Remember, empire exploration. So they were arguing over a small piece, well, not small, but a fairly small piece of land known as the Ohio River Valley. Look at that yellow portion that I've highlighted. But why, sir? Why the Ohio River Valley? What's special about the Ohio River Valley? Let's look at it real quick. Take a look at the map. See the left side? Big map. Do you see the red line? The red scraggly line there? That's the Ohio River. Now, if you look on the right, the zoom in picture shows us the Ohio River Valley area. Now, what's going on there? Why is this so important? Well, the 13 colonies are just to the east of that Ohio River Valley. But there's something going on there. What's going on there? Three reasons that I consider the best causes of the war. I want you to write these down in your note sheet, okay? Pause it if you need to. Number one, cause number one, both countries wanted power. Oh, they wanted power over one another because it was a new world. It was a new country. So with power comes land, comes territory, comes wealth, comes riches. Remember our triple Gs from the first six weeks? Right. Cause number two, boom. The Ohio River Valley was full of animal fur. Now, why is animal fur good for money? What can you do with it? At the time, you could sell it. You could you could make goods out of it. You can make clothes out of it. You could sell it in Europe, and you would get lots of money. So animal fur was very abundant in the Ohio River Valley, which led to lots of money. And lastly, number three, British people in the colonies felt that even though they owned the colonies, that they couldn't move out of the colonies. They couldn't go west across to the Ohio River Valley. Now, why would they want to do that? Well, they wanted land. They wanted to leave the colonies. They wanted to move away from there. But the French lived in the New World, too. And not only that, the French had a lot of forts in the area. Forts are like little encampments or, or battle stations where, where trading could happen or military could exist. So the, the British didn't feel comfortable with the French kind of standing in their way there. Let's move on. Now, let me just remind you real quick. Why did the Native Americans decide to really partner up with the French? Well, remember, France was F with natives for F. So a lot of Native Americans really became close friends with the French, and they decided to join them in this war. So let me show you the answer. You're going to write that down in your note sheet. France was friendly with the natives 
for first. Use that F. Remember from our first six weeks lessons, right? Pause it right now. Get that answer for yourself. So the Native Americans joined in with the French in this war. Now, did you know that there was a young 21-year-old militia commander by the name of George Washington that took part in this war? He was in this war, the future first president. Did you also know that his stumbling onto a French brigade or group, French military group, was the start of the war? He saw, I mean, this, I'll tell you more about the story in class, but he basically, with his militiamen, stumbled upon the French on the way to Fort Necessity, and boom, they fought. George Washington had to surrender because he was defeated, and the war began. The French and Indian War began with George Washington. Did you know that? That's a pretty cool fact. Now, he did surrender, so he did lose. Interesting. Now, another guy that shows up that's pretty famous is this guy right here. Do you recognize him? He's on the $100 bill. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin shows up. Now, what is Benjamin Franklin? Well, he's not a military guy, but he's a thinker. He's a strategist. So Benjamin Franklin, he's in the colonies, and he's kind of worried that the French are going to overtake the colonies. And he tells the colonies, hey, man, we really need to unite. We need to get together to, to kind of fight these French so that they don't take us over. So he puts together a plan. What's the name of the plan, kids? The Albany Plan of Union. And then he designs that flag. You see the flag with the animal in there? That's pretty cool, right? At the bottom, what does it say? Yeah, join or die. He says, we got to unite to be stronger against the French because if not, they're going to defeat us. Unfortunately, not all the colonies decided to join. So the Albany Plan of Union was kind of a failure. Yeah, make sure you get that answer on your note sheet. Pause it if you need to, okay? Awesome. So what happens in the war? Well, there's battles and there's a lot of stuff, to, a lot of details to tell. And I can share that in class. But to sum it up, the English decide to go full ham on the French. So this guy shows up. He's the Secretary of State. He's named William Pitt. And William Pitt says, we are losing to those Frenchmen. We are going to beat their bloody. And so they put all this money into the war by sending more troops, more supplies, more ships, more troops again, more supplies. And it's costing a lot of money, but eventually England starts to win the war and the French start to slowly get defeated because there's all of these resources. So Mr. Pitt's happy because England's winning. Now, unfortunately, that has a consequence to it and it's where we're headed with this. So England wins. There's King George. He's like, oh, bloody, we won the war. King George is a guy we're gonna study a lot in this next chapter. So France gives up and they say, fine, we gives up the Ohio River Valley. And they give up. They give England, Great Britain, all of the Ohio River Valley that they own. They said, here, take it. Fine, we're done. So France signs a document called the Treaty of Paris of 1763. And they give up. So England's super happy because now they've won and they've taken all of that new land. Now, the Native Americans, they're the real losers in this war because both sides had Native Americans fighting for them. And a lot of them died and they all got pushed off the land, gone. So the Native Americans were the super big losers of this war, even though England won. So look at the map. Pause it if you need to so you can get your answer for this question I'm asking you on the sheet. How did the defeat of the French affect the map? Look on the left side. Do you see the Ohio River Valley? Do you see the shaded part where they were fighting? Do you see that? And now look on the right. Look at how America grew. Look at how the colony started to grow right there. Look at all that new land that they've taken up. You see how, how basically has it's almost doubled with the result of the war? Now, that's a good thing, but it's also going to kind of turn into a bad thing. How is it a bad thing? Well, the effects of the war. What happened at the end of the war? Let's look at the effects. Pause it and write your answers down on your sheet. Number one, after the French and Indian War, England, Great Britain, they were in debt. Debt. They owed a lot of money for all of the cost of the war. So that is bad because it's going to lead to the problems that we're going to talk about in the revolution. Number two, the British decide to pass taxes. Taxes are monies that we pay to the government. And they make the colonists pay all those taxes. So that leads to effect number three. The colonists look at their king, King George, as you see on the right there, and they're like, wait a minute. You want us to pay for your war? That's not fair. But of course, the king looks at them and, say, looks at them and says, of course it's fair. I won the war for you. So you are going to pay me for the cost of the war because I got you all that Ohio River Valley. 
And of course, the colonists at this point are starting to grumble and be like, well, that's not cool. We're poor. We don't have any money. And the king's like, I don't care. You're paying the tax. So this leads the king to make a rule, a law. This one's a biggie. Pause it if you need to on your sheet. He makes something called the proclamation line of 1763. A proclamation is an announcement. That's all it is, an announcement. And he says, this mountain range is called the Appalachian Mountains. Do you see it in the map? Do you see the little triangles? And he tells the colonists, you may not cross those mountains. You may not leave the colonies. You must stay in the colonies and not go west to the Ohio River Valley. And of course, the, the colonists are like, we can't move to the Ohio River Valley even though you've won it for us? What is that about? And the king says, no, I have made the proclamation of 1763. You may not cross that line. So where does that lead us to? That leads us to the next chapter of the story. So if you're interested in finding out what the colonists do, Come back for me on the next video, and we're going to talk, everybody. Listen, get your note sheet done. I'll see you in class, everybody. Thank you for hanging in there today. I love you. Bye.